All praises once again, brothers and sisters, to the Most High God. I'm your host, the Apostle Ruben of IUPR Bible Radio, podcasting out of Little Rock, Arkansas, to the true saints of the Most High God. Now, brothers and sisters, we're going to be dealing with uh, 1 Corinthians 1. Now, I know I'm at Romans 2, and it's for good reason, but I want to go to 1 Corinthians 1. We're going to read verse 1 and 2 all the way down, and then we're going to stop and look at what we've been trying to tell you all along. Again, brothers and sisters, when it comes to these people, it's a vision they have. They want you to see democracy in the Bible. All, all, all. This is what they want. And oftentimes, brothers and sisters, what it does is it brings our people into a state of mind to where there's no way what is being taught is true by these Hebrews. So our black pastors say, no, it's not something we want to believe. And our emotional people in the crowd, oh, look at them. We guarantee you, brothers and sisters, these women are not standing up because of what the Bible says in these Christian churches. It is what these pastors are saying. And see, our people that go to these temples of the devil, they're going to continue to be tricked. It's not that there's no hatred for anybody. You know, you got to look because Christianity is a vision. We looked at the Bible. We analyzed it. This is what we want to see. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about what we want to see. It's not about color. It's what we want to see. And I want you to pay attention. First Corinthians 1 and 1. Paul called to be an apostle of the Messiah Christ through the will of God. And Sothenes, our brother. Pay attention. Unto the, unto the church of God, which is in Corinth. Unto the church of God that's in Corinth now. Unto the church of God that's in Corinth. To them that are sanctified in the Messiah Christ called to be saints with all that in every place call upon the name of the Lord, the Messiah Christ. Call upon the Messiah Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. So we're going to stop here because this is the verse that the Edomite Christians are bringing forth. Now, when you look at it, it says called to be saints. Now, let me put you up on game. Let's go. Let's let's start looking. Let's get the book of Psalms. See, Edom's job is to watch every inch of what the Hebrews teach, the true Hebrews teach. So here's what we teach. Pay attention. Psalms 148, 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel. A people near unto him, praise ye the Lord. So what we're teaching, brothers and sisters, is that the Israelites are the saints. He also exalted the horn of his people. See, people, his people. His people. Oftentimes, when you look up who his people are, I want to go to Luke. See, brothers and sisters, we'll go to the New Testament verse with them. And we because we want you to see this. The book of Luke, chapter 1. Verse 67. And his father Zacharias, whose father, John the Baptist, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Hmm? 
for he has visit he has visited he has visited and redeemed his people. Israel is his people in the New Testament. Not all nations. You gotta wake up to this. It's dangerous to be around these people. Secret councils going on. Again, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. His people was Israel. So, Psalms 148. Just wanted you to see that. Psalms 148, verse verse 14 again. Not um, Believe you me, brothers and sisters. Psalms 148, verse 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, which is Israel. New Testament says that. The praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel. So this even is indeed. So his saints indeed are the children of Israel. A people near unto him praise you the Lord. So Psalms 148 verse 14 says that the saints indeed are the children of Israel. Not anyone that believes Not anyone that believes in Christ. No, we're telling you that. Not it, the Christians say anybody that believes in Christ is a saint. No. The Bible says the saints were a people. Let's, again, I'm going back here. Brothers and sisters, we're, we're showing you here the book of Hosea. Chapter 11, verse 12. Just doing this. Ephraim, northern kingdom, compasses me about with lies. They went into idolatry upon the other nations. And the house of Israel with deceit, but Judah yet ruleth with God and is faithful with his saints. Again, the saints are people. People now. Acts 26. Acts 26, and we're going to start in verse 7. Ah, 26 and 6. And now I stand and, and am judged for the hope of the promise made unto made of God. Let me start that over. I'm excited. And now I stand and and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which the promise our twelve tribes instantly serving God day and night hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. All right now. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? He's talking to Agrippa now. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of the Messiah of Nazareth. The name, the doctrine. Well, what name was he against? Let's go back. What name was Paul against? The book of Acts chapter 5. Verse 28. Here, here are the Jews talking to the apostles saying, did not we straight? Now, the apostles are Jews too now. Come on. So it's Jew and Jew. Let's not play the game. Did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have food filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. So the name of Christ was doctrine, teaching, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. This, that lets you know that the name they were teaching was Christ, and it was doctrine. Doctrine. Oh, now, doctrine, doctrine. 
the doctrine of Christ. The, what was doctrine? What was doctrine? Proverbs 4 and 1. Hear ye, children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. Come on, brothers and sisters, doctrine was law. That's what doctrine was, law. It didn't say, and forsake ye not my law. The verses together, for I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. So the doctrine of Christ was the law of Christ. The doctrine of Christ was the law of Christ. That's why, again, Romans, Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ the Messiah, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. What does it mean to walk after the flesh once again? 1 Corinthians 10. Verse 18, Behold, Israel after the flesh are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar. To be after the flesh is after the altar. Now the question is there, but Paul is asking. Israel is after the flesh and the being after the flesh is to be partakers of the altar. So, Going back to Romans. Romans 8. Verse 1. Now there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ the Messiah, who walk not after the temple, but after the spirit. Okay, pay attention. For the law of the spirit. Wait a minute. Hold up. Oh, look. Hold up now. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ the Messiah. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ the Messiah. So the law is of the spirit. I want you all to understand that when you see spirit with a capital S, that's Christ. Spirit, it was his spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ the Messiah had made me free from the law of sin and death, which once again was the law of condemnation in verse 1, which was after the flesh, which was sacrificed. The law of sin and death was sacrificed, brothers and sisters. The temple, the priesthood. There's two laws in this verse. Galatians 6 and 2. Let's just do Galatians 6, verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, sin. What does that mean? If a man be overtaken in a fault. The book of Matthew. See, brothers, this is how we know there are certain ones that Christians will mess with and there are certain ones they won't. We're not one of the ones that are going to play with them. We'll cut them down instantly, but just just the word. If a man be overtaken in fault, what is a fault? Matthew eighteen fifteen. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault. So, fault is sin. Trespass is sin. Trespass against the law. Sin. Thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Now, we know that the trespass of the law is fault. That's what fault is, sin. So, ah, Galatians. Galatians 6. I want you to pay attention, brothers and sisters, in verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in sin, 
Ye which are spiritual. Wait a minute. Now ye which are in spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Huh? Wait a minute. If your brethren is overtaken in sin, ye which are spiritual. Wait a minute. Brothers and sisters, ye which are spiritual. I got, I, 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 brothers and sisters, this is not a part of my sermon, but you, I mean, people want to know what that means. Ye would ye which are spiritual. Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. What does it, what is meekness? What is meek? What is meek? The book of Psalms. What are the meek doing? The, the Christians, what they like to do is they like to make it say what they want. But let's look at the meek. The book of Psalms chapter 18. He did, he did. No. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to do this right. The book of Psalms, chapter 25. Verse 7. Here's David writing through the Spirit. Remember not the sins of my youth. Mm, we don't want that. Nor my transgressions according to the mercy. Remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he will teach sinners the way. What, if he's teaching sinners the way, what way is he teaching them? Let's go back. Psalms. Let's let David tell us what he's talking about because he's writing in dark sayings, parables. Psalms is like parables. And the pastors, they're not going to break it down. They got you, you have hours and hours and hours of dialogue and mm -hmm, nothing. This is all you get in the Christian church. A bunch of, amen, hallelujah, amen, Jesus, praise, oh, glory. The book of Psalms 119.32. I will run the way, the way, the way of thy commandments, the way of the law, when thou shalt enlarge my heart. Teach me. O oh Lord, the way of the way of thy statutes, thy laws again, and I shall keep them until the end. So the way of God is the law. The way. So when David's writing, when he's writing in Psalms 25, verse 8. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he will teach sinners in the way. The way is the law. He will teach sinners in the law. The meek will he guide in the law. The meek will he teach his way, which is the law. So the meek would know the law. I'm not going to play with these Christians. The meek will know the law. Easter, Christmas, baby day, dog day, cat day, bird day, tree day, picture day, whatever day, rock day, stone day, twig day, twig, twig day, pork chop day, whatever day that is not ordained in this Bible, we already know. The meek will be teaching the law. The meek will be teaching law. And we know this is not this man here. We're not worried about him. He used this color for the advantage. This man used his color for the advantage. And everybody wants to try, oh, well, you know, um, do, 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 do. I mean, this is crazy. We're not going to do this with these people. Or not. It's the same as these people. So if this man created. This is Christ. 
according to the Bible. This is him. This is him in his glory. This is what Daniel saw. This is what John saw. This is what they saw. Daniel 10. Daniel 10. And verse 5. I'm going to read verse 5 and 6 just for sound. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with the fine gold of Uphaz. His body also was like the barrel. See, an example of his body being like the barrel would be this. See, I didn't show it all, but he would have a green garment. Like this, like like the picture is here, he has a green garment down. But when you when you think about it, let's go back. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes and as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet likened, 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 likened. You got to understand, brothers and sisters, into polished brass. It was likened unto polished brass. They can't get over it. And the voice of his words, like the voice of a multitude, deep voice. But see, these people, they, no, we don't want to see that part. Nah, that's not what we want to see. Christ loves us all. Not, can't you see now? Let's go back up. Where am I going? The book of Revelation. Chapter 1. Ah, these quick keys, brothers and sisters, I got to learn how to use them. Not good at computers, but uh, I'll do my best. Revelation one fourteen. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. His ha- The hairs of his head were white like wool. Wool is a texture as white as snow. And the his and his eyes as a flame of fire. And his eyes as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. His feet, brothers and sisters, the color that they are describing Christ to be is this one. This is what they saw. They did not see. And his feet like a to fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. So who is this? They saw. Most Christians pass it. Oh, well, it was. The, it, no, let's let's go over. We're not going to play the game with them. We were tired. Revelation 2. Verse 18. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write, these things saith. These things saith the Son of God. Son of God. Son of God now. Who hath his eyes unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. 
this is the Messiah and his color. There was color. <laughs> it, w- it was. There was color from his glory and also from the cross. It was the same. It never changed. We're showing you something, brothers and sisters. This is how it is. Now, I went on that little rant, but I want to go back the book of First Corinthians, because I, I got off set. We start talking about the saints. First Corinthians 1. Verse 1 again. Paul, Paul called to be an apostle of the Messiah Christ through the will of God and Sashins. Sashins. Our brother. Unto the church of God which is in Corinth, to them that are sanctified in the Messiah Christ, called to be saints. With that, in every place, call upon the name of the the name of the Messiah Christ, our Lord. Both there is now. It's not called to be saints. So we went to the saints, then we went to the, the so-called color. Because brothers and sisters, I'm not worried about it because the angels are going to be the one that separate them. That's the parable of the seeds. Matthew 13, and I will say 27, 28 now. The angels are going to know who to keep. It's not just about color. They're, they're going to know. But this call to be saints. Now, the question is, if the saints are already the children of Israel, you say, well, you guys say that the saints are the children of Israel. This verse clearly proves you wrong when it says called to be saints. It looks like a whole nother group of people. And they will be right. Anybody that sees this verse know called to be saints mean these are people that are not the saints. This is, brothers and sisters, these people look at it right how it needs to be looked. And they will confuse a lot of our brothers and sisters with it. But now, see, we're going to read the top again to the point of the saints. Pay attention. And to the church of God, which is in Corinth, to them that are sanctified in the Messiah Christ, called to be saints. Now, here's what we want to do. Let's get to the book of Acts. Because brothers and sisters, we guarantee you the Christians are going to, they're going to stop right there. See? Acts 18 and 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. Corinth. Come on, Christians. Let's read this thing. After these things, Paul departed from Athens, Greece, and came to Corinth. When he went to Corinth, who was there and found a certain Jew. Also, the Jews were in Corinth. The Jews were in Corinth. Now, we just, we keep telling you, it's the details you got to look at. Jews were in Corinth. This is what we're proving to you. And found a certain Jew named Aquila. Born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because the Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. But we want you to see, brothers and sisters, there are Jews in Corinth. Paul's kind found a certain Jew. Okay, what was Paul? Acts 20, 23, I'm going to read the top. This is Paul speaking. I am verily a man which am a Jew born in Tarsus. So Paul is a Jew born in Rome. So let's go back to Acts. 18 and 1. 
After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew. So Paul's a Jew named Aquila. Let me finish it. Born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. So she's a Jew also because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome where Paul was from. Claudius made an edict. You Jews get the heck out of here or else and came unto them. But what we want to know is that there were Jews in Corinth and they were Paul's brethren by race, by race. We're not going to let Edom, you, you could keep on playing the game with Edom all you want to. They were his brethren by race. Kendrick. Let's drop down. Acts 18 and 8. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue. Stop. The chief ruler of the synagogue. Synagogue. John. Oh, John. Chapter 18. Let me see. Who was at the synagogue? Let the Christians find you a verse. John 18 and 20. The Messiah answered him. I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple whether the Jews always resort. And in secret, I have said nothing. According to this verse, only Jews met in the synagogue. That's who met in the synagogue. So when we go back to Acts just reading this because because Christians it's all about the details Acts 18 verse 8 and Crispus the chief ruler of the synagogues well the Jews were believed on the Lord with all his house so the Jews believed on Christ and many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized see many how can the Corinthians be in a synagogue the Bible never states that all nations went to the synagogue. They don't go to the synagogue now. <laughs> but if you these people here, brothers and sisters, you can't. Common sense. Common sense is going to be the reason for salvation. So the Jews are in Corinth. Paul's brethren, according to the flesh, are in court. Romans 9, 3, and 4. Do we, you don't have to do that. But here's what we're going to do. Go back to 1 Corinthians 1. And I'm, I'm going to show you. See, brothers and sisters, I'm going to show you beyond the shadow of a doubt what I want you to. I just, let me not spoil it. 1 Corinthians 1 and 1, Paul called to be an apostle of the Messiah Christ through the will of God and Shasin's, the our brother. So Sosthenes, our brother, brother, is this a brother? Is Sosthenes the brother that believes in Christ or his brother by lineage? In Kendrick, we're going to see. Unto the church of God, which is in Corinth, to them that are sanctified in the Messiah Christ, called to be saints, called to be saints. Now, let's look. Let's get the book of Isaiah. I'm going to show you right now who the called are. You're going to have to see it, bro, so you, you can either see it or you're not. Isaiah 48 and 12. Ah, let's read verse 11. For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, I will do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory to another. There's no other nation that's going to get the glory of God. But pay attention. Hearken unto me, O Jacob. And Israel, my called, called, 
I am he. I am the first. I also am the last. Israel is just called. He don't, there's, don't find out this doesn't change. It will not change. Period. Let's get Joel. Joel 2. And we're going to start in verse 31. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. The great and terrible day of the Lord is already at hand. See the war behind them, brothers and sisters? There's a war. Revelation 19.11. You guys, you guys know it. It's going to be war. With the great red dragon, he wants to deceive you in thinking, ah, oh, well, that war is not against us, but to the contrary. When we get into the series of Revelation, we're going to prove it. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. And it shall come to pass <laughs> that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered, which is saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. From who? Zion. Before, when the sun and the moon is darkened, when it comes to pass, whoever out of Zion who shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And in the remnant whom the remnant of Israel, the remnant of Israel, whom the Lord shall call. Letting you know once again, in that time, whoever is among Israel that calls and are called from Israel shall be saved. The Bible never says all nations are going to be called. No. Now, again, I'm not going to make this long. Romans. Romans chapter 8. 29. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you real quick, brothers. This is how you know. For whom he did foreknow, he also predestinate predestinate to be comforted in the image of his son that they that he might be the firstborn of many brothers so whom he did foreknow he also predestined now we went over this before brothers and sisters we're gonna you know it is very important that you realize that there are some people who would watch this video for the first time so we got to prove it to them Amos 3 and 1, hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which the Lord brought up out of the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. According to Amos 3 verse 1 and 2, God only knew Israel of all the nations. He didn't know all nations. He didn't care about all nations. Some Psalms just Psalms seventy nine again. Psalm seventy nine again. Pour out thy wrath upon the heathen. Stop. Pour out thy wrath on the heathen. Want you guys to pay attention now. Because it's very important that we investigate everything we read. We don't want to pass anything up. Heathen. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this. This is out of the Zondervan's Compact Bible Dictionary. Heathen. Usually used for a non-Israelitish people. Usually does not mean all the time. But 
and thus have the meaning of Gentiles. So heathen are Gentiles. Let's go back. Heathen means Gentiles. Pour out thy wrath upon the Gentiles that have not known thee. The Gentiles never knew God. And upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name. They, wasn't called upon, they didn't call upon them. So according to Amos 3, 1 and 2, God knew Israel, but he did not know anyone else but them. But Paul said, it's confusing. In the book of Romans, chapter 11, again, verse 1, I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite. Again, his people are Israel. Luke 1, verse 68. Of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin, God has not cast away his people whom he or which he foreknew. Foreknew means foreknow. God only foreknew his people. Won't not. What the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, now, Again, what I want you to see is the people that God foreknew was Israel, not all nations. So back to Romans. Back to Romans. I'm going to show you these Christians and how they do. Romans 8, 29, for whom he did foreknow, which is Israel, he also did predestinate to be comforted to the image of his son that he, which is Christ, might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, which is Israel, and Israel only, he also called. Wait a minute. Hmm. So the predestined, which he foreknew, was the called. The Bible does not say all nations would be called. The predestinate were whom he foreknew, which was Israel. They were as called, like it says in Psalms 40, excuse me, sorry, Isaiah 48 and 12, Joel 2.32. The Bible is, doesn't contradict itself. Israel is the call. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, which is Israel, whom he foreknew. For whom he did foreknow, he also predestined. Who he knew in the Old Testament, they were the predestined, not all nations. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Because that's it. They were the call. They were the call. The predestinate was the cause, or the predestined was the cause. All nations were not his call. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. So the called were the predestined. So what I want you to do, because brothers and sisters, we don't play at all. We confront every verse in the Bible. We don't skip anything. We tell you. We'll go anywhere they go. Now, here's the confusion. Because now I'm being called a liar. And here is the verse that they're going to go to. Now, I'm going to read two. I'm going to read this one and the next one. I want you guys to pay attention. Run from nothing. Romans 9.23. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had of four prepared unto glory. But here we go. Now, whom he also prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called. Here we go. Not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. According to this verse, the Gentiles are called to. Woo! Boy, they just messed me up, didn't they? Yeah, they just messed me up. See, God's calling Gentiles. <laughs> but, one thing is, brothers and sisters, is you want to be careful about what Christians will do. Because we already told you that these Gentiles, let's go back.
Because if you don't, these pork chop eating Christians, they will bring you away from common sense. Now, uncircumcised. This is the Zondervan's Compact Bible Dictionary. One who has not submitted to the Judean rite of circumcision, Gentiles. So if you were not circumcised by the flesh, you are also a Gentile, meaning, meaning, meaning this. I want you to pay attention, meaning this. The book of Acts 15. Real quick. Verse 23, and they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren send greetings unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles at Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. These brethren were of the Gentiles, which means they were Gentiles themselves. They were of the Gentiles. The brethren were of the Gentiles. That's why it says in Acts 15 and 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren. Their brethren were Jews. See, these Christians want you to believe that, oh, white people and black people, they were brethren in Christ. No. No, 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 no. When it says, and certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren. The brethren taught the brethren. They weren't teaching anybody else. Those Jews that came down taught their own and said, what? And said, what? Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye shall not be saved. Which means there were uncircumcised Jews in other lands. Uncircumcised Jews in other lands uncircumcised one who has not submitted to the Judean rite of circumcision Gentiles if you are uncircumcised you are a Gentile it doesn't matter what nation you were but the reason why the Christians don't want to admit this is because they know that common sense will tell you that Paul was going after his uncircumcised brethren and the way they define uncircumcised is Gentile No matter how many definitions you want to look at, here's another. This is the Christian Bible. The state or condition of being uncircumcised. People who are not circumcised. Gentiles. Huh. They know that the uncircumcision were Gentiles. Any of the uncircumcision were Gentiles. Because that's what Gentiles were. The uncircumcised. But they want you to make, they want you to, oh, it's non-Jew, non-Israel. No, no, no. That's not biblical at all. We're showing you what they what they think a Gentile is, an uncircumcised man. So when we go back to Acts 15 and 1, and certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren their own kind and said, except you be circumcised because you were not circumcised in this land, after the manner of Moses, Leviticus 11, to a Leviticus 12. What what does he mean? What what let, let's after the manner of Moses. Let's get Leviticus. After the manner of Moses, Leviticus 12. I'm not going to try to do it all, but Leviticus 12 2. Let's hurry up. Speaking to the children of Israel, not all nations. Not all nations. If a woman have conceived seed and born a man child. Then she shall be unclean seven days according to the days of the separation for her infirmity. Shall she be unclean? Oh, went past the verse. Sorry. Verse 3. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. They were not circumcising all nations, just their own people. This is the way the manner of Moses presented circumcision. So how is it that these full-grown men, how is it that these full-grown men in Acts 15 
made it to adulthood without being circumcised because they were under the gods of Edom and other lands. They were the gods of Edom. Because we're telling you, we're being honest with you. They were the gods of Edom. They worshiped them in other lands, other places. And we're going to go into that, brother, sister. We're going to go into Acts 14 and 1. And we're going to show you that these people, which are the forefathers of these people, worshiped other gods. Had nothing to do with Christ. Had nothing to do with the Bible. Now, let's go back. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you should, you, you should cannot be saved. So there were uncircumcised Judeans in other lands, and they were Gentiles. But let's go back. Pay attention to the Gentiles. That's why I went there for. But we're going to prove it again. Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, verse 24. Even us whom he hath called, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. So this is the verse they would lock on. He called the Gentiles too. But let's read on down. As he also saith in Hosea, I will call them my people which were not my people, and her beloved which was not beloved. Wait a minute. Her people which were not men. I don't know. We got to get a couple of verses. We're not brothers. Sisters. We got to get it. Who was? We got to get a couple of verses out of the Bible. Who is not his people? Isaiah. Who is not his people? Isaiah 7 and 8. For the head of Syria is Damascus. And the head of Damascus is resin. And within three scores and five years, three score and five years, Ephraim, which is the northern kingdom, shall be broken. Let it be not a people. So here, Ephraim became his, Ephraim is the northern kingdom of Israel. They became not a people. So let's take a look at the southern kingdom, Jeremiah. Both kingdoms became not a people. Jeremiah, chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 19. Here's Judah. Now, Isaiah was prophesying the northern kingdom, Jeremiah the southern. Woe is me for my hurt. My wound is grievous. But I said truly, this is a grief, and I must bear it. My tabernacle is spoiled. The tabernacle is a temple. And all my cords are broken. My children are gone forth from me, and they are not. Here's when Judah became not a people. There is none to stretch forth my tent anymore and to set up my curtains. That's when Judah became not a people. Both kingdoms became not a people because they went through captivity but Hosea saw it Hosea brothers and sisters even though Hosea is behind Jeremiah Hosea took place before Jeremiah he saw and Hosea too Verse 22, and the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil, and they shall hear Jezreel. Jezreel is another word for Israel. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that have not obtained mercy. And I will say unto them which were not my people, thou art my people. And they shall say, thou art my God. This is what Paul is quoting. 
Those that be the reason why they were not his people because they were scattered in other lands, worshiping other gods. And now the call was to them to come out from these nations to your religion that was from the beginning. That's what this is about. This is what Paul is quoting. And I will say to unto them which were not my people, who he's talking to, Jezreel. Jezreel is another name for Israel. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that have not obtained mercy. Why? Because God took his mercy away due to the fact they were worshiping other gods. And I will say unto them which were not my people. Let's go back. Come on now. Romans. Brother said, we ain't got to play with these Christians. Romans, they, they're not really reading the Bible. If it comes down to a debate, they're going, is they're going to try to get you out of the book. Romans 9, verse 25. As he saith also in Hosea. Hosea was Hosea. Hosea was Hosea where we went. I will call them my people, which were not my people. That Who are they? Jezreel, Israel. He's quoting Hosea. And her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that the place, and that in the place where it said unto them, ye are not my people. There they shall be called the children of the living God. What verse is he quoting here? Let's go back to Hosea 1. Paul is quoting Verses, Hosea 1. That's why he says, as he also say in Hosea, Romans 9, 26, let's read it again. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there shall it be called, sure, excuse me, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Ye are not my people. Ye are not my people. Hosea 1 and 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. Children of Israel, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, the them is Israel, up in the top of the verse. Yet the number of the children of Israel, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, that them are the children of Israel. You are not my people. See, you are not my people. Why? Because of idolatry. There it shall be said unto them, you are the sons of the living God. This is what Paul is quoting. So those Gentiles in Romans chapter 9 verse 24 is proven in verse 25 and 26. They're the lost sheep of Israel in other lands, worshiping their gods. They've never been circumcised. They never offered up an offering at all to God. They never kept the Ten Commandments. They never have. They were lost in the world. Why, why do you think Paul said this? Ephesians. Ephesians. 2. See, Christians try to flip this scripture around. Excuse me, not scripture, but New Testament verse. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are called circumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hand. Who was the uncircumcision? The Jews. He's talking to the uncircumcised Jews. Now, when they were uncircumcised, pay attention. Wherefore, remember that ye be in times past Gentiles. Man, come on now. Gentiles. Oh, boy. Uncircumcised. One who is not submitted to the Judean rite of circumcision. Gentiles. It's the same thing. How do you think? Here we go. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision. Because the uncircumcision was the same as Gentiles. Uncircumcision or Gentiles don't mean none Israelite, none Jew. It's just uncircumcised. And Paul, this is how they knew, brothers and sisters. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision, because Gentiles and uncircumcision was the same. By that which is called the, the circumcision, which are the Jews, and the flesh made by hand. 
that at that time you were without Christ. So when you were Gentiles, uncircumcised, at that time you were without Christ. So when you were in the world amongst other nations, you were without Christ. You were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. So when you were uncircumcised among the nations, you were without Christ. Aliens from the commonwealth and strangers from the covenant, the covenant of the Levitical priesthood and the Ten Commandments of promise. Having no hope and without God in the world, this is what was going on with the uncircumcised Jews among the nations. They had no hope. So when they were taught repentance, they would turn back unto the Lord their God. Again and again, brothers and sisters, we've proven to you that the only one that was called were Israelites. They're, you, you're not, they're not going to trick you with these games. So when it says 1 Corinthians 1 and 2, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, to them which that are sanctified in the Messiah Christ called to be saints. We've proven you, brothers and sisters, the only ones that's going to be called is Israel. Isaiah 48 and 12. Joel 2.32. <laughs> Romans 8, 29 and 30. That's the catcher. The only the predestined were called. And Romans 9, 24, 25, 26. The called were Israel, whether they were scattered and uncircumcised, which meant Gentiles, or they were right at home in unbelief. It's the details this man holds back. He holds back the details. So when you see verses like, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in the Messiah Christ, called to be saints, that, of course, it looks like other nations are going to be called to be saints. But when you look at the called, the only ones that were called was Israel out of the nations to be back with the people. Because it doesn't matter if Israel are saints. If they're not called, they're going to be dead saints. Paul is talking about the living saints. That's what he's talking about. And um, we're going to do it again, brothers and sisters, this Sabbath. We're going to go back into who the saints are. Brothers and sisters, I, there is levels to this, but no believer in Christ is the saints. That's just another lie he tells. All praise to the Most High, brothers and sisters. I'm your host, the Apostle Reuben, just dealing with 1 Corinthians 1, verse 1 and 2. To those that uh, get confused at that, never do. You got to have verses. See, brothers and sisters, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, 2 Corinthians 13 and 1. Always remember that. 2 Timothy 2 and 5, if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. IUPR Bible Radio teaches all scripture from Old to the New Testament. We realize that the scriptures may offend a lot of people, but we must teach all things, adding or taking away nothing. And with that, brothers and sisters, all praises. We'll see you again. Share and like these videos because, brothers and sisters, this is free teaching. We don't expect you to send us nothing. We're just teaching the Bible. And if there comes a time, it does. But right now, the word is running its free course. Like it says in 2 Thessalonians 3 and 2. So all, well, 3 and 1 and 2. Sorry about that. All praises, brothers and sisters. We'll see you once again.